I was starting to think I'd never see this guy. Where the hell? What is he doing here on a Wednesday? Cool Tool Tuesday on a Wednesday? That's right. The Not hell? all of us get to take vacation every three months like yourself. Whoa. 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 You were on vacation all month, sir. Uh, oh, my way. God. I knew it's because he turned into a Matco sales rep That's now. That's right. <laughs> oh, I got a September Pro Tech catalog to cover. Anything looking good here on the shelf? Did we get anything new? Uh, not really. We have a new truck on the road, so that's we, where we do. Junior, right? Junior's on the road now. That's right. Uh, yesterday was his first day. He's out today. Killing it in the sales? Uh, no, I told him to take it easy on the sales. <laughs> about to do some meet and greets, some shaking of hands. Uh, how about being polite and asking people, would you like us to service your shop? He did say that he had uh, one gentleman today that said, who are you? He said, my name's Noah Scott. I'm an independent tool dealer. Just want to know if you'd like me to stop and service your shop. I'm going to be here in the area seeing the other four shops. The guy said, you're Snap-on dealer? No, sir. I'm an independent tool dealer. All right. Well, there's no need for you to be in my shop then. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. No, I was like, uh, all right, you guys stay safe. Have a great week. See you later. Snap <laughs> on shutting him down. <laughs> he said there's two young guys. We don't take too kind of the all kind around me. Yeah? He said there's two, young, <laughs> uh, two younger kids in there that kind of shook their heads and put it down like they were embarrassed. And I said, don't worry. I said, if you can, stay out of the way. I said, but just park so if it can be seen from the bay door when you're seeing the other shops and you have your door open, he can see the foot traffic going in and out and eventually it'll entice him to want to come on and see like what all the hoopla lots about. <laughs> so just, I said, win him over by being nice to him. Hearts and minds, hearts <laughs> and minds. I see we got some jerky back, but we're still missing Jeff's bacon jerky. Uh, I have uh, have to go back to Amazon, I guess. Uh, oh, God. The bacon jerky is on its way. Uh, that's what you've been saying for three months now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's at home because... Okay. Oh, look at this. So, Easy Red makes the same thing, but in a square form. So, that's yeah. kind of cool because I got the hexagonal ones from okay, Matco. Okay. Yeah, Matco. So, Easy Red makes these now. That's actually kind of nice that they went the square route, too. It gives you a little bit more space in the hexagonal style. I can dig those. Now, is this a three-piece set, four-piece set? Three-piece set. Three-piece set. Twenty-four ninety-five. Okay. And they actually released them back in or in September, so Safe. it was June. Yeah, they about them? six months ago, I think. Yeah, I see. June, they were in the flyer. I mean, I didn't see them in the flyer, but I mean, that's I think that's when Matco released theirs was about six months so back or so. About the same time, they put them in the June flyer, and then they were gone within three days. Like, gotcha. Three days of June. I got three pairs. And 10 that were on back order, I'm now down to one out of the 10. Cool. So I just keep putting them on order because they've been something that's really cool. Most guys have been telling me they're going to take them and use them at home. Oh. One guy bought the set. He said, oh, it's great for my RC cars. Right. Small said, parts. RC cars. How yeah. many do you have? I have five. Yep. I said, well, then you got to buy a second set so you can have six. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, vessel screwdrivers. We get vessel screwdrivers, line uh, punches. Still on order, laying punches, yes. Vessel screwdrivers, no. All right. The tote of the forgotten. See, if I would have never mentioned them, no. you probably would have forgot. <laughs> no, it's actually, they're saved under your name, so that's a special order tote. Nice. So it doesn't get sold to uh, people like yourself. They go, hey, what's in this box? You know what, let me take that. <laughs> and then I go, well, that's supposed to be for Jack or John or Jimmy. And you're like, yeah, let me just use it for a week. I'll bring it right back to you. Any trade shows coming up? Uh, no, they did a virtual show with ISN, the one wholesale distributor I use. Uh, it was two weeks ago, Friday, Saturday. All right. So, there was decent deals, not great deals. There's nothing like in-person deals because right. most places you start networking and talking and they'll go, well, hey, if you buy this, this, and this, then we'll throw this and this in it. Cool. All right, all right. So I did get the Ling punches in. We were waiting for the vessel screwdriver. Still be kind of curious to see uh, how they overall feel in the hand. Like we looked at them a while back. I can vaguely remember, but they were not the wooden handle ones. So I am kind of curious to see Correct. how those feel um i remember they had a heavy neural too and i'm kind of curious about the tips too um 
I think someone made a comment before because I had posted a picture of all the different colors that Snap-on offers with the handles and whatever. And they're like, oh, you're a Snap-on fanboy. I'm like, I still like the Matco screwdrivers, but I did make mention a long time ago when I did a video about all the different types of screwdrivers that I used, even the Icon ones, some of the variances. And one of the major variances that I noticed is like the number one specifically, um, and Snap-on specifically, they have an incorporated teeth on the okay. screwdriver. So the and vessels then, that you used that first time had incorporated teeth on them all the way up to the number three. I see, because the number one for the rebanded wit ones that uh -huh. Matco has, you put it in the screw first time go and it's, it just wants to round out. Yeah, it wants to barrel out. And I'm like, hey. So I'd be curious to see how the vessel ones work out for sure. I'll look at my, uh, my Cornwall ones that I have too and see because those were made by the same company that made the Matco ones. Uh, so, yeah. And I liked the handle on the Cornwall ones better. The square. No, they With weren't the square. They were a tri-oval still. Oh, were they? But they weren't quite as fat. So oh, they I know which ones you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, they had the fuzzy stuff on yeah. the side of them as well. Yeah, 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 I remember that. So because they had two different styles of screwdrivers. Correct. They had the they had square, square ones, which were the Asian-made ones. And then they had the round, more rounder one. Yeah. yeah, okay. I remember now. We also got the new Protec September, so I'm excited about that. Not sure what kind of hot deals are going to be in here. You guys will have to wait until we get back to the house, though. <laughs> We're going to look at it together. The hell, let's say there's three or four hot deals in there. I don't know if there's a whole lot of hot deals. All right, so. let's let's take let's take Jeff's top three. Go ahead and point out the two or three that you said that hey hey hey, these hold are on. the ones. Hold on. I'll go to the page where I'll point out the ones that aren't such hot deals. <laughs> Just <laughs> pick, pick your top three. Your, your top three. Because <laughs> everybody will say, hey, we already saw those and those were piles. And I'll say, yes, they were. <laughs> so, uh, really, something that I like. It's not anything. We're going to flip it around. Hang super on one second. special deal. Yep. Nipex Needles. Absolutely badass, dude. By far the best that you'll ever find. They've got cutters, pinchers inside of them. So they're about 20 bucks more than that normally. Yeah, so I got it's the not monster a great... ones from you. I haven't yeah. really used them a lot though, to be honest. But I, I know that they're there. I just forget that I got them because it's buried under all my pliers. And those were the straight nose ones that were made 45s. by- 45s. Oh, they were 45s. Yeah, I got the 45 ones and by they Monster. Were the ones made by- Rebanded Nipex. Monster, yeah. yeah. So who, who, who was, that was, it was Knipix, but it was what, you said it was, and they rebranded it but they used their design, was it? No, on those ones, on the needle Still nose, made in Germany. Yeah, on the needle nose ones, it was the same. On like the water pump pliers, they were slightly different where mm -hmm. they were the push button Cobra style that I have a pair up there. Uh, yeah. Da, 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 da. yeah, right there, so, I have yeah, those. Yep. Those were the ones that they did a different design on the head, but right. still made in Germany by Nipex. Those ones also made in Germany by Nipex. Those look identical to their, they call them like a Swedish pipe wrench. Cool. So they did some of those, but. Let's do two, three, and then I got to get off the truck. Yeah. I'm sure he's going to be clamoring at the bit. Know. I glanced through it, but. Uh, there was one in here. Yeah, gotta love the pinup girl stuff. I will say that. Oh, it's cool. This was the other deal. Number two. Excellent set. Uh, extractors, extractors, free female extractors, all for two forty five ninety nine. So, cool. Pretty stoked with that. Always good on the drill bits. So that would probably be my number three that I would say. Cobalt drill bits with that too. Yeah. Nice. All right, guys, we out of here. Jeff, thanks for having us on the truck. Oh. Thanks for the September catalog. We'll yep. thumb through it small and get back to the house for beer and bullshit. Uh, I am going to be looking into either a getting an M12 charger or getting the full kit. I know a while back I did a review on the Milwaukee um, soldering iron. Yep. Saw a lot of bad reviews on it. Was thinking of buying it for like the RC car wiring because I got some little things to uh, wire in still. But I've kind of put that off on the back burner. Be it that it may have been having issues with the Power Pro butane torch, the uh, striker is not working so good anymore. One year warranty on it. I've had it for a few years now. But before thinking of going into this, finding out from Jeff that there's actually, they work better with the two amp hour and the three amp hour batteries. The 1.5 is the reason why I got some bad reviews, I think, right? Yeah, that's what I would say that when they were first out, they had 1.5s in them and there was nothing wrong with the soldering iron. They were just burning through batteries literally very okay. quick. So 15, 18 minutes of runtime 
which I guess seems like a lot, you know, if you're soldering, you're only soldering for seconds at a time, but guys would leave them on, they'd burn through the batteries. Good to go. All right, guys, we'll see you back at the house. What's going on, everyone? Justin again, as always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. So it was really cool to see Jeff today. Didn't expect him on a Wednesday, right? It's supposed to be Cool Tool Tuesday. Uh, but we missed him on Tuesday. He made sure to stop by today. We did pick up our Lang Impact Punches. So I threw those in the box. I did forget to bring home September's Pro Tech catalog. So we will have to do that in a separate video. For those of you that were interested in seeing what Pro Tech had to offer for September, hopefully we'll do that here within the next couple days or so. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. So yeah, got a lot of snap-on stuff here in front of me and I sold my soul to the devil today. No joke. After years of whining and complaining about snap-on credit, about some of the fallings and shortcomings that they had, especially with not having a rep for extended periods of time, your boy sunk his teeth in, signed his name in blood, and I decided to trade in the Triton that I recently picked up where I would have had the option to pay six months same as cash, which was totally doable because I had money saved, and I decided to give it back and go with the Zeus and sign up for the Snap-on credit, which I told myself I was never ever going to do again. <clears throat> now I'm hoping with the money that I have saved and the money that I'm planning on putting towards this tool every single month, that there might be a better than good chance that I'll have it paid off within a year. And I'm saying no more than two years. That's my goal, okay? But hopefully within a year, I can have the Zeus paid off. Um, but anyway, yeah, six months, same as cash. Not gonna happen with this. He did still let me keep the free Snap-on speaker, Bluetooth speaker, that takes the 14.4 volt battery that originally was given to me for free when I picked up the Triton and then gave me a free 12-piece screwdriver set. Now, you guys actually helped me pick the color on this one because I did an Instagram post asking you guys, what color do you think would look best in the Snap-on screwdrivers? I wasn't asking because I was thinking about buying some. I've had the Snap-on screwdrivers in the past. My opinion still stands. I think that the wit screwdrivers made by Matco are for me. Overall, I just prefer the feel of the Matco or rebranded wit screwdrivers over that of Snap-on or some of the other ones out there. The gear wrench ones, I think they're okay. I, I don't mind the handle too, too much. A little bit too thin for, for what it is that I like, having somewhat large hands. But he was willing to give me a free 12-piece screwdriver set. I'm not gonna say no. And I do remember telling you guys before that the number one Phillips screwdriver with the built-in incorporated teeth was a favorite of mine. I actually bought two number one screwdrivers, number one Phillips and number one flathead individually from Snap-on because of that reason alone. So for that reason alone, I have those two screwdrivers still at work and I just use them in conjunction with the Matco ones. But you guys all said, the majority of you said, high viz bro cannot go wrong with high viz. So I took your guys' thoughts into consideration and today when I went and signed the deal of deals, I walked away with this 12-piece high-vis screwdriver set. So thank you very much, guys. I appreciate you at least chiming in on Instagram and letting me know what you thought uh, the best color choice was as far as screwdrivers. In the past, you guys might recall, I used to have the green with black handles, um, but I, I wanted your guys' take on this, and you guys said high-vis, so with the majority of you saying high-vis, I went high-vis. I also ordered and picked up this motorcycle cell phone adapter holder. Uh, because I was telling the wife, I'm like, I would take the motorcycle so many more places so long as I actually had some way of being able to peer down every once in a while and see where it is that I'm going. The only places I really take my motorcycle is places that I've already been to, know the route, and don't have to worry about looking at my phone. And if it's relatively close to where I think it is and I need it, I'll pull over, take my phone out of my backpack because I don't like traveling with it in my pocket take a quick peek and then I'll just keep on cruising, right? So I thought it would be pretty cool to pick something up from a motorcycle on Amazon. So I did pick up this cell phone holder. I don't know much about it. It did give you a couple of extra rubber bungees. So I'm hoping that this holds up and works out well for us. 
I have been trying to figure out how to do a motorcycle vlog because I have been getting questions asking me my thoughts and opinions about the 390 Duke compared to the ZX6R, what I like over the other, vice versa, and if I had to do it all over again, would I, and what bike would I prefer today now knowing what I know about the two? Well, I've been trying to, and so far I haven't had very much luck with the audio, and I've seen a lot of these motorcycle vloggers uh, using these little cat fuzzball things to go over their mic, so we might try that and see if I can't make the audio come out better. So we're still working with that. I uh, just saw this Kawasaki keychain, thought I'd incorporate that with the other one that I have on the Kawasaki and just pick that up as a, as a, just something else to throw on there. All right, so the Zeus, I've been already asked, I cannot believe I've already been asked this, but look. All right, so as far as the Zeus goes, I've had text messages, I've had Facebook messages, and I've had even Instagram messages saying, how do you like the Zeus? I kid you not, I picked this up Tuesday afternoon, or was it still relatively morning? I don't know, I took lunch around 11 or something like that, and picked this thing up. And then before the end of the workday, I was already getting asked when I thought about it. I hadn't at that point, I had not registered it. I did not sign on to the uh, Snap on Cloud. I hadn't gone on to the, uh, any of the programs and inputted any of the activation keys or codes or pin numbers or anything yet. So this thing was, even though it was unlocked, I still needed to go through and complete all the registration process. Guys, I have no thoughts and opinions of this specific scan tool yet. Give me a little bit more time. Let me finish the registration process. Let me go through the snap-on training courses that they have to offer. See if I can't learn anything more about this thing that I don't currently already know uh, based on just playing with it and going through with the stylus. And then I'll get back to you and we'll do a video about it and I'll kind of give you the walkthrough. The Zeus for me is the next step. Uh, I had the Solus. You guys know about that, that I had the Solus before that. I had the Ethos Pro. Uh, I know that when I went to a snap-on training course, I actually won an Ethos Plus and gave that away to another uh, YouTube follower of mine that actually met me out here in my neck of the woods. I just gave it to him after I won it. I said, if you come out here and I win it for some reason, I'll just give it to you for coming out. And he utilized the hell out of that thing for a long time. You guys know I was thinking about getting the Bosch or the Altel Maxisys Elite. And that was before they came out with the Altel Maxi Sys Ultra, which uh, JCR54 just picked up, showcased it on his Instagram profile. The thing looks pretty spectacular. There were things about it that I absolutely loved and appreciated about the Altel program. Okay, there, there really is. There's a lot to like about it. It can do a lot more than I believe this thing can do as far as programming cars. And there's just a handful of other things that it works out well for manufacturer-wise that I have not run into uh, that I was told that it's better. So I'm looking forward to talking with Jim and seeing what he thinks about it versus what he had with his Varus. Uh, but Jim did have the Varus as well as the four-channel lab scope that come with both of them. So I'd be curious to see what his thoughts and opinions are. Hopefully he does a video for us kind of telling us uh, what his thoughts and opinions are as a result. Did reach out to uh, Michael Flatrate Master talked with him kind of back and forth. I don't think he uh, knew about all the ins and outs of the Zeus versus the Triton because I was really trying to make the decision whether or not I should stick with the two channel lab scope or if I should move over to the four channel. I kind of had snap on in mind now that they actually offer the software subscriptions that you can update online. That was the biggest like no no for me and the reason why I sold the Solus was because I was unaware that they had actually transitioned over to a software subscription that I could just pay for online to renew. If I would have known that, I probably would have kept the Solus and then would just bought a, some kind of lab scope to kind of go with it, whether it be through Pico or even get the Alltel so I can get some of the other features that the Solus didn't have and just kind of incorporate it with that. But since I had sold it and I had put that money to the side for a future scan tool, I decided to start thinking about it real seriously. I went with the Triton because it was kind of two tools in one. It was the tool that I sold that I wish I would have kept, and it was the tool that I sold that I was dissatisfied with as a, as a result of not having the ability to update the software. Well, now I knew that I had the ability to update all this stuff on my own, 
And so, should anything happen and Garrett not be around, I now know that I can update this or just pay for the update monthly subscription every single month. I think Joey said he pays like 100 bucks a month and he never misses a beat and he can always update his scan tool and he has the Veris D10. I wanted to take it to the next level, okay? I'm tired of being a grunt. I'm tired of just taking stuff apart and putting stuff back together. I'm not learning anything. My, my thought process my education as far as taking things apart and putting things together, I feel like I've mastered that, okay? I've mastered the taking things apart and putting things together. Yes, there are times when I need an extra set of hands. Yes, there are times when I'm extremely frustrated because I can't get something to go in or something to come off. And every once in a blue moon, there's something that I hadn't taken apart before that sometimes is just quicker just to ask the guy next to me, hey, have you taken this apart before? Yeah, all right, cool. Can you mind showing me real quick? And then bam, I'm done, okay? Instead of sitting there wasting time. Uh, but as far as the diagnostic stuff, I still consider myself at like that C level. You know, all I've really done is mechanical testing, I can view PIDs, I can use a test light, a multimeter, things like that. I can follow a flow chart, um, but really without any ha having any further direction or really anything, uh, not knowing how to actually get quick access to back pin probing things or wiring dogs and things like that, looking at TSBs, I can figure all the little tiny things out. But I, I want something so much more that I'm not really being given the opportunity to do still. So in 10 years, I have really not been given a lot of opportunity to diagnose vehicles, to actually get a car with a check engine light and actually give them some kind of answer from A to B. I haven't been able to do that since I was at the dealership. Uh, now I've been at the independent shop now for over three years. I think we're working our way up to like four, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it's still three. I'd have to think back and do some math, but I'm just not growing. As a, as a technician, I'm not growing. As a mechanic, I was satisfied with what it was that I was doing because it was paying the bills, putting food on the table. I was able to buy the occasional shiny thing. Guys, I'm tired of buying the same old tools day in and day out just to kind of, what, share a difference of opinion? It's cool, I have fun with it. Uh, it's even nicer when a company gives them to you so that way I don't have to buy them just to show them to you and see if they're worth it. But I'm, I'm pretty much done just buying sockets and wrenches, I think. I mean, really, we've discussed pretty much all manufacturers out there. Anything from big box stores to tool trucks to Amazon specials to some of the newer companies that have been most recently developed in the last 12 to 24 months. And yeah, I, I don't remember who it was I was talking to, but it almost kind of feels like a socket's a socket, a screwdriver's a screwdriver. There's a few differences between the two, but at the end of the day, is it really worth you know buying just to basically talk about the same damn crap? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is at the end of the day, I want to be here, and I know that I'm still right here, but at least I'm not down here anymore. I want to take myself to the next level. I want to get more proficient at diagnosing vehicles, learning more about the electronic side, learning more about scoping things. I've been talking a lot with Polly's Garage. Him and I have kind of go back and forth. I want to start renewing my ASC certifications. I'm looking to get my A1 uh, and engine repair. I believe was A2 is engine performance, but I want engine repair and engine performance, and I want to get those two. I had brakes, I've had G1. I don't care to go back and get recertified in that yet, not until I tackle the ones that are most important to what it is that I'm currently doing. And since I do a lot of work around the engine bay, I'd like to not only know how to take something apart and put it back together, but I'd like to be the guy that actually diagnosed it to begin with. And I'm not talking about compression testers and fuel checks and things like that or using a test light and that's pretty much the extent of it. I want to get up to that level that like South Main Auto is, like Keith DeFazio is, like Scanner Danner, you know. And even though I haven't seen, even though he doesn't do a lot of videos about it, I know that Michael, like the flat rate master, is up there. I'd like to get to that level, you know, the JRC54s, you know what I mean? I want to get to the level where I'm confident in my abilities, not only diagnosing it, but repairing it. And then, and only then at that point in time, when I feel like I've gotten to that level, will I reconsider the idea of possibly opening up my own shop. I think I've kind of gotten to that point now with 
being ready to go to the next level, I would say don't be surprised within the next five to 10 years if I'm not still on YouTube, but owning my own shop, because I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, the frustration with how everything has been ran, done, etc., from the shops that I've been at has continuously grown throughout the years and not being able to learn what those above me know has become increasingly frustrating. So if no one's gonna help me get there, then I'll get there on my own and then away I go. That's all I got for this video, guys. Look, I know there's a lot of naysayers out there and I know that I contradict myself by applying and using the Snap-on credit when I said it was one of the worst things that I had ever done and yet here I am doing it again um, but I have an attitude about it this time, okay? I have an attitude about it this time. This thing basically is supposed to take you from a C-Tech and make you a B-Tech, and I think with the intelligent diagnostic programming, with the ability of updating your software without having to have a snap-on rep, and having, in my opinion, one of the best top two lab scopes in the market right now, this is the way to go. If I want to get there, this thing's going to take me there. I firmly believe that. You guys might disagree. Put it down in the comments. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. Thanks for watching. And give me a couple days, a day or two, and we'll look to do that Pro Tech catalog of September and see what kind of hot tool buys, if any, are out or what new and innovative products other manufacturers have come up with that we so love to see in the Pro Tech catalog. And maybe, if we're lucky, they might be available on Amazon and we can share it with you guys. So cheers to those of you that have your beers. I hope you're enjoying your work week and we'll see you next video. Cheers and deuces.